Hello and good morning, friends. Welcome to Leg Life, you guys. It is day three of our Alaskan RV adventure. I actually just woke up a few minutes ago, got out of the RV, wanted to get out here, stretch my legs, take in some fresh air, and uh, sit here and look at this amazing view. I'm not gonna lie, sitting out here along the banks of the Chena River, just uh, getting some fresh air, waking up a little bit. This is a pretty great place to spend your first few minutes awake. The girls are still in the RV sleeping, RV right there. Uh, we're gonna wake up this morning and then we're going to a place here in Fairbanks that Sherry and I absolutely love for breakfast. You guys have seen it in past videos. It is called the Cookie Jar. Oh my gosh, it is so delicious. And then you guys, later today, we are going to North Pole, Alaska. We are going to the Santa Claus house. Um, I, I don't think I could possibly overestimate the level of excitement. See, I am a huge Christmas fan. You guys already know this. Auburn is a huge, huge Christmas fan. Sherry is gonna have to tolerate the unbelievable amount of Christmas love that Auburn and I have as we go to the Santa Claus house today. Friends, we're so excited to take you guys along with us. So uh, let's get the day started. <music> sitting out here enjoying the Chena River and uh, look who comes just floating by. I got someone here in a canoe. Sherry Beth is awake this morning. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning. What are you doing? Watching You're baby. watching Auburn's vlog. I mean, okay, that's me on the screen, but there's Auburn right there. But look, also, there's Auburn right there. Wow. So two things. Number one, uh, Christmas sweater is on. You guys, anytime the Christmas llama makes an appearance, you know it's gonna be a good day. Number two, getting ready to unhook us from water, from power, which was actually a really nice thing about this campground is that it had like full hookups, which was awesome. So getting ready to disconnect us so that we can go, so we can get breakfast, so we can get on the road, so we can go to the Santa Claus house. Because you guys, Christmas llama, needs to go to the Santa Claus house today. Just got here to the cookie jar in Fairbanks. Actually, the parking lot is kind of packed. I hope there's not too long of a wait. Sherry Leg, what are you wearing today? Tell us who you're wearing. Christmas cat. Christmas cat. Christmas cat. Did you expect to be wearing your Christmas cat in June? No. No? But it's 2020, and so who knows what to expect anymore. Right. And Auburn. I'm the greatest gift ever. Best nope. Present. Best package, package ever. Wow. It's okay. We got there. The we got there together, and that's what matters. Now, let's go get some breakfast. We just got checked in. Uh, there's a few people ahead of us. Not too bad. I don't think it's going to be too long of a wait. Here's the menu here at the cookie jar. Uh, they serve breakfast all day. That's kind of what they're known for is breakfast, but they do have other stuff. Uh, but for me, I think I. I'm definitely doing breakfast. They have this like Nolan's cinnamon roll cut in half. It's basically like French toast but with a cinnamon roll. That looks amazing. I think last time I was here I got the biscuits and gravy and they were really good. Uh, their special today is Eggs Benedict which also sounds good. Food has arrived. Uh, I went with an egg white omelet that has bacon and green peppers. It's got cheese in there. I got mine with home fries. It looks pretty great and rye toast of course. Sure went with a pancake, side of bacon. Auburn went with the French toast. We just finished here at the cookie jar. Um, the rain has also started. It was a bit of a mixed bag. I'm gonna be totally honest because we always are with you guys uh the food was good breakfast was great it did take a long time it was like an hour before we got our food which is kind of crazy if we'd have known that we probably wouldn't have come here because we are in a bit of a schedule today however here's one thing that like we kept in mind uh we actually talked to our server and she said that this is the busiest day they've had since the middle of march because things were closed down because of covid and so not only like is everybody coming back and going to restaurants but remember like your servers and your staff are trying to get back in the routine uh of serving large crowds again so this was the busiest day they've had in like three months that is reason to celebrate because that means that like business is coming back like the economy is moving which is a good thing however it did take longer than we expected, so it was a bit of a mixed bag. We still love the cookie jar. Would definitely recommend if you come to Fairbanks. Just pulled into the town of North Pole, Alaska, and judging by the giant Santa, the giant tree, and this amazing building right here, we are at the Santa Claus house. We're actually so glad that the Santa Claus house is open. It's one of those things that if you're gonna go to the North Pole, you've got to go to the Santa Claus house, and it just opened recently, and we are so, so glad. We are here inside. The Santa Claus house. This is kind of the store portion. And there's this whole display of nutcrackers, and next to it, this whole display of Disney stuff. Look, there's Mickey and Minnie nutcrackers. How cute are they? We've got all of this amazing Disney stuff. I'm loving 
the Tinkerbells. I just found this whole display of Mickey and Minnie. Like, I don't know. They're just really pretty. And then look at this whole, oh my gosh. I want everything on this shelf. Cinderella's dress, her shoe that's actually like a ring holder. Oh my gosh, look at the carriage. Cinderella and Prince Charming. There's Lady and Tramp in their spaghetti dinner. I need it all, I need it all you guys. This is where you would normally go to meet Santa. However, there's this little sign here that says Santa will not be available until further notice. That's so sad, but it's a very pretty setting. And playing the part of Santa today, we have Auburn Human. Merry Christmas. <laughs> so I could spend hours in here because there is just like stuff everywhere. Like this tree, look, top to bottom, covered in ornaments. There are just like toys and gifts and things Every Like I just, I want to touch and like play with everything here. And I've shared this in past vlogs when we've come here, but one of my favorite things about the Santa Claus house is that in different spaces around the building, they actually have letters to Santa that kids have written in and they have them on the walls and they're just so fun to read. And I don't know, it's just like kids are the best. And they also have like a little cafe here where they sell fudge, different cookies, different sweets. They have like a coffee stand here. So if you have a sweet tooth while you're visiting the Santa Claus house, they can definitely take care of that. M-I-C-K. E-Y-M-O-O-S-E. -E. It's not how I remember the song going, but the Apparently that's how it goes here. And you guys know that when Sherry and I travel, we love picking up ornaments sort of as memories from trips so that every year when we decorate our Christmas tree, it's just like a walk down memory lane. And the Santa Claus house has so many different ornaments. There's those here, there's those here. And you guys, there are like, I don't know, there must be hundreds of different styles around this whole building. And even at the Santa Claus house, I can find Sasquatch stuff. And a little bit of a Santa Claus house pro tip, you actually can buy postcards here. And if you didn't plan ahead and bring stamps, all of the cash registers here have stamps. So you can buy a stamp and a postcard here. And then right over here next to Santa's chair is a mailbox that says letters to Santa. Drop off your Santa mail here. So you get your postcard, you get your stamp, and you can drop it right here to be postmarked from North Pole, Alaska. Well, our time at the Santa Claus house has come to an end, so we are gonna head on out. You can see the RV out there waiting for us because it's time to get back on the road. But before we leave North Pole, there are some people that we need to say goodbye to. And those, of course, Santa's reindeer here at the Antler Academy. You guys, how could we leave North Pole without coming and saying goodbye to the reindeer? Look how sweet they are. Ooh, look at that stick. That looks delicious. So we are out on the road. Auburn is driving. Sherry is back here. I'm in the passenger seat looking for wildlife, fun things to stop and take photos of, things we think you guys would like to see. It's been kind of a rainy and cloudy morning, but it looks like the clouds are starting to break. We're seeing a little bit of blue skies. Hopefully, this ends up being a nice drive. So just so you guys know where we're driving today, we're actually taking the Richardson Highway Way back down as we start the to head towards Anchorage. So we took the Parks Highway up from Anchorage, Talkeetna, Denali, Fairbanks, and then we could take the Parks Highway back down, and that's what most people do. But the Richardson Highway actually is older than the Parks Highway. Uh, the Richardson Highway built, uh, I think, 20 or 30 years before the Parks Highway. Don't hold me to that. But the Richardson Highway kind of is like an oval back to Anchorage. So the Parks goes one side, the Richardson goes the other, and so rather than like driving the same loop or the same way, we decided to to complete the loop. It is definitely less traveled than the Parks Highway, but it is absolutely beautiful. So we found a beautiful lake pull-off area here alongside the road. Of course, we had to stop. Sherry and Auburn are over here. You guys, look how beautiful this is. Look how clear the water is. Like, you can totally see there's like lily pads out there. Auburn spotted some fish out there. Sherry, I have a very, very serious question to ask you. Yeah. Can I get in the water? Please? Please. Yeah. Yeah. And fortunately, guys, I'm wearing my Crocs because, well, why would you not wear your Crocs? 
And so we're gonna step in. How cold do you guys think this is? Actually, hold on. Let me know in the comments below right now. How cold do you guys think this water is going to be? I definitely think cold. Here we go, first step in. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Okay. No more. Trace is not allowed to go in anymore. Whoa, there's a fish. You guys aren't gonna be able to see it. It's actually right like over in there swimming around. Uh, and also just for proof that I'm in the water, splish, splashing around. Oh my gosh, it's actually kind of refreshing. But like, look at this setting. It's just so stinking beautiful. And it's so big. And there's like all sorts of cabins kind of over there along the edge of the lake. And there was somebody out there with like a jet ski earlier. Found a sherry in her natural habitat. Taking photos. <laughs> well, back on the road. Goodbye lake that I got to put my feet in. We're hoping you can see this. There is a moose out there on a sandbar. He's like out there in the water, right? Can you guys see him? Look at the moose. Do you see him out there walking across the river? Really Holy cow. How cool is that? Look at that, you guys. So friends, one of the things that we've been trying to do this entire RV trip is just sort of give you a perspective of the land around us. But we actually have kind of a unique way that we're about to give you a perspective because some of you guys will know that we have a drone. We almost never use our drone. But you guys, we are in a place where I think the drone is gonna work perfectly here. So I hope you guys get to enjoy this amazing scenery that we're getting to see right now. So full confession, um, this is how little I used the drone. I just took it off and I realized that I didn't have an SD card in. So now we're gonna take two. Let's try this again. <laughs> into the town of Delta Junction. It is a town of, oh, just under a thousand people, like 980 people or so. It's about 4.45 p.m. Uh, there's a place here that Bert and Jessica told us about called The Drive-In, which apparently is a good local restaurant. So we're looking for The Drive-In so that we can um, grab something to eat. So here's what the outside of the Buffalo Center Drive-In looks like. Looks like they have things like burgers, uh, corn dogs, hot dogs, milkshakes. Bert and Jessica told us this is where we needed to come. So uh, let's see how good the food is. So here at the drive-in, there's like these tables outside under this nice little pavilion thing. Super nice on a day like today. Sherry got us our picnic table today also. Can we talk about the fact there's a Ronald McDonald over there, which is pretty awesome. Food just arrived. Um, I went with the Buffalo burger with bacon and cheese. I also went with curly fries because yes, please. I got the Shake of the Month, which is a Nutella shake. Oh boy. Uh, Sherry and Auburn are twinning today. They got the exact same thing. Cheeseburger with onion rings and small strawberry shakes. Sherry, how is the onion ring? Good? Just left the drive-in. Uh, first time there for all of us. And I've got to say, that place was delicious. Like everything, the onion rings, the fries, the burgers, the shakes, the setting, the weather here in Delta, like that was just so, so good. So we're outside of Delta Junction just a little bit and we stopped at a place that I so wanted to show you guys on this vlog today. It is one of my favorite things about traveling down the Richardson Highway because it is so, so, so uniquely Alaskan. And that is the fact that right back over here behind me is the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. This is the big Alaska oil pipeline and it actually parallels the road that we're traveling for a while. Now, for those of you guys who might not know, the oil pipeline was built in the mid 70s. It's 800 miles long and it goes from Prudhoe Bay up in the very north part of Alaska down to Valdez where the oil can be put on tankers and shipped out of the state and shipped internationally wherever the oil is going. This is such a big deal. You guys, this, uh, to be quite honest, like this pipeline is the lifeblood of our state's economy. Uh, billions of billions and billions of barrels of oil have gone through this since it was uh, built in the mid 70s. And it's the kind of thing that I've seen this a lot of times. And every time I see it, it's just, it's so stinking fascinating. And so let's go take a look at the oil pipeline. You can see the pipeline coming out of the ground there and then I'm gonna zoom in because you can actually see it on the far hillside. 
Look at that, absolutely amazing. You guys might be wondering what these kind of things sticking off it up top are. Uh, those help heat and insulate the pipeline. And you can also see the pipeline is raised in a lot of areas. Uh, they were really strategic when they built the pipeline because they wanted animal herds to be able to pass underneath it. Uh, they wanted it to disturb as little of the natural environment as possible. And um, it's pretty amazing that this thing has been here since the mid 1970s. Isn't that cool? Also, isn't this view amazing? Just like the rolling hills, the forest, and then those big snow-covered mountains down their distance. This is just awesome. You can see all of the different colors up on the mountain. That's different places where there's been like avalanche or like sand slides or silt slides or rock slides. Pretty amazing. Just arrived in Glen Allen, Alaska. Uh, we are filling the RV up with gas. We've been driving for several hours. We have probably about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to go until we get to our campsite. Just so you guys know where Glen Allen is. Glen Allen is sort of on the north-ish side of the Wrangell St. Elias National Park. Fun fact, Wrangell St. Elias is actually the largest national park in the United States. It's more than twice the size of Denali, and you actually could fit seven Yellowstone parks inside Wrangell St. Elias. It was really cool because on the drive here, we got to see Mount St. Elias, which is actually the second highest mountain in Alaska. It's like 18,000 feet tall. I'm not sure, oh, it's actually, it's right there. You can kind of see it shrouded in clouds, the top of it at least, but it is sticking up over that building right there. Again, uh, Mount St. Elias, uh, 18,000 feet tall, the second tallest mountain in Alaska, the second tallest mountain in the United States and Canada as well. And we filled up at a place called The Hub here in Glen Allen. And The Hub is like a big gas station, but it also has a bit of a gift shop inside. You can see you can find lots of different Glen Allen type of tourist gift shop type things, t-shirts and postcards and hats and stickers and you know, all the usual kind of stuff. Stopped at another roadside rest stop because the views are just too amazing to pass up and you guys I feel like we run out of adjectives so let me just show you I just don't know how many times I can use like amazing and beautiful and wonderful and pretty because it just always is like look at this like how in the world do you describe that without using the same words over and over and over all right you guys the mosquitoes here are the worst maybe not only that I've seen on this trip maybe that I have ever, ever seen. They're so bad that we actually all had to make a run back to the RV. You guys, look how many mosquitoes there are. This is crazy. So we just arrived to the Grandview RV Park and Lodge, and this is where we are staying tonight. You can see we have a spot right behind us. So here's our spot. We already got plugged into electricity. You can see views right out the back, which is awesome. And then the front is just, again, mountains just everywhere you look. We've got like a little fire pit here, some picnic tables. So I'm gonna get our camp chairs set up. We're gonna get a fire going, hang out, make some s'mores, roast some hot dogs. And Auburn could not be more excited. Well, bug she's, spray. I was gonna say, she's mostly excited for bug spray because how bad the bugs have been. One thing that we have learned this trip that Sherry and I did not know, also Auburn is spraying the bug spray and I'm downwind and my eyes are burning. You stood there. <laughs> One thing we have learned about Auburn this trip is that she is like mosquito bait. Apparently, like they love her more than I have ever seen mosquitoes love anybody. I don't know what it is about her. I'm delicious. Apparently, she is delicious. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. She's been eaten up by mosquitoes this entire trip. I bet I get five stars on Yelp. So we got our fire going. The girls are getting s'mores going as we watch the sunset here, you guys. Let me take a step back and you can take a look at this. How beautiful is that over the mountains. So I went foraging for wood for our fire and I found like this amazing like Gandalf walking stick <laughs> and I'm not sure if I should become a wizard or if I should break it and burn it so we can have more s'mores. Right now I'm a little bit torn but I'm probably gonna break it because s'mores are greater than wizards. All right so you guys I may totally be crazy but this thing right here is the trash trailer as you can see and I think there's an animal inside there like I know this is crazy, but I was walking by looking for wood and I saw between this crack, like some, oh God, there's for sure something in there. Like there's something moving. Nope, I'm out. The girls have had s'mores and now we are taking it up a notch, you guys. We are roasting reindeer hot dogs mm -hmm. over the fire. Auburn's got her feet essentially in the flames <laughs> because she's trying not to freeze to death. <laughs> Sherry and I roasting weenies. So uh, I've still got 
Malweenie cooking, and I thought we would end today's vlog by doing something that Sherry and I do uh, in a lot of our travel videos. We're trying to do it more in our normal videos. We haven't done it yet on this trip, and I thought, you know what? What a great thing to end, and that is high. What was your high from today? So we're gonna ask Sherry, I'm gonna ask Auburn, and then I'm gonna tell you guys what my high was as well. So uh, I think we should start with Auburn. All right, Auburn, uh, day number three on your Alaskan RV adventure with us. What was your high from today? My high, I have two highs. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed getting to drive. I really like driving. Um, and my second high was the Richardson instead of Parks Highway. It was more scenic, I guess. Less crowded with people. Not that the Parks Highway was crowded with people, but I feel like we got to see more on this road. I liked it a lot. Sherry Bath. Same for you. What was your high from today? I mean, I agree. The Richardson. I just, the road, I think, like the road itself is rougher, but there's less cars on it, and the scenery is just stunning the entire way. Um, so I agree with both of theirs. The Richardson is amazing. That was one of the reasons I actually wanted to do our trip this way. You know, most people who visit Alaska, when they come up here, if they're going to go to Denali, and Denali is obviously like a big focus, is they just drive the parks up to Denali and maybe the parks highway back. Uh, and they never get to see this side of our state. And to me, the Richardson Highway is just so beautiful. So I love that. But actually my high was the fact that Auburn drove. Like I never get to just be like a passenger and look out the window and not focus on the road. <laughs> because yeah, like Sherry doesn't, Sherry's not driving this highway, let's be honest. And so like the fact that I just got to like sit back and be the DJ that kept the music going and look out the window was super cool. I haven't experienced uh, driving in Alaska like that in like probably honestly since I was like a kid. So I thought that was really fun. And friends, I think that's where we're gonna end today's vlog. This is the third vlog in our uh, RV travel series. It's not gonna be the last one. I thought we were just gonna have three, but the problem is we're not home yet. And so we have to keep vlogging tomorrow. So there will be another RV vlog on Monday, basically getting back home. Tomorrow you guys are on Monday's vlog, you guys are gonna get to see some glaciers, you're gonna see more mountains, more of our adventure, kind of returning the RV, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and while this has been amazing, I've gotta say, we just wish we had more time because there were things that we wanted to do, like make moose chili. We brought everything to make this moose chili and we just like ran out of time. So uh, the RV has been amazing. Wish we had more time with it. But remember, we're actually going to be doing another trip in July, heading to another part of Alaska for a few more days. We're so excited to share that with you. But again, on Monday, we're going to have a fourth RV travel vlog and uh, cannot wait for you guys to see it. Friends, thanks for watching. We love you. Thanks for being a part of our community. Thanks for following along on all of our journeys and we'll see you on the next Leg Life video. And one last thing before we end this vlog, we really just want to thank Cruise America again for giving us this opportunity. We will leave the link to their website in the description below.